Hello, I'm Mark Vanienzo, Assistant Director for Digital Strategy and Access and uh, Project Director of the Letting Away Project. Uh, this presentation focuses on material that we covered uh, in the office hours called uh, today, February 24th, 2021, uh, related to the call for proposals for the Lighting the Way Working Meeting. Lighting the Way is, is a project facilitated by Stanford University Libraries that focuses on improving discovery and delivery for archives and special collections. It has been funded as a national forum grant from the Institute of Museum and Library Services. The project is centered around convening a series of national meetings on how to get systems supporting access and use of archives and special collections to work together better. We believe there's an opportunity to get a broader and more in-depth understanding of how these systems can and should work together to support archival discovery and delivery and to develop a forward-looking agenda describing an ethical, equitable, sustainable, and well-integrated future for access and use of archives and special collections. Archival discovery and delivery is how we describe what people and systems do to support finding, accessing, and using material from archives and special collections. Systems include not just software, but also workflows, forms, standards, and more. We also refer to these as front-end systems um, and include things like those which support the search and presentation of archival description, the delivery and presentation of digital objects, request management systems, and interpretation and crowdsourcing platforms. Part of the broader challenge is to determine how to effectively integrate all those systems to work together as a coordinated whole, which serves as a fundamental area of focus for our project. As you can probably see, there's a wide variety as to the types of systems that support archival discovery and delivery. And part of the challenge is to determine how to effectively integrate those systems to work together as a coordinated whole. The archive space community describes this as a functional coupling between systems. The feeling of frustration when a system, a set of systems or functions isn't well integrated will probably be familiar to many of you. It's a common struggle from the perspective of thinking about workflows in archives or digital library systems. This also impacts those involved in article discovery and delivery, not just researchers, but those who work in archives who need to support these functions as well. We've realized that this integration work itself also requires close collaboration across job roles and responsibilities, departments and institutions, and thus also fundamentally relies on people. Our project is targeted to practitioners in three primary groups. Uh, archives, special collections and library workers, um, including archivists, librarians, managers, administrators. Um, these people represent the primary functional stakeholders in getting systems to work better together. Uh, we also uh, are, want to involve technology workers, um, including software developers, user experience designers, product managers, systems architects, and technical leadership. Uh, this also includes people who work for vendors, service providers, and consortia, as well as people who work for individual institutions. Uh, third, uh, we're interested in uh, working with people who have interest or expertise in terms of legal or ethical issues in archives and special collections, such as intellectual property, inclusive description, cultural sensitivity, risk management, and open access. Uh, overall, one of our goals is to make the project's findings applicable across organizational contexts as well as job function or specialization. So we're really interested in, in kind of casting a broad net in terms of potential participants. Our project has four main goals. Uh, first, to map the ecosystem of archival discovery delivery. Uh, secondly, to develop a set of conceptual and actual recommendations that respond to technical, ethical, and practical concerns. Third, uh, to build a shared understanding between archives, library, and technology workers charged with this work. And fourth, to activate a diverse group uh, to develop and adapt our recommendations and findings across a variety of contexts. Our project activities roughly break down into two categories, um, meetings and research, publications and communications. Uh, for meetings, uh, currently uh, we had our first event the Lighting Way Forum in February 2020 uh, with 72 participants selected from over 200 applications. Um, now what we're going to be working on is this working meeting, uh, which is the, the second of the two meetings that's intended to build on the work of the forum. Uh, in terms of research writing publications, I'll keep it pretty brief here, uh, but one of the things that we're uh, 
I, specifically for the working meeting is we're looking for uh, people to develop written contributions for something that we're referring to as the project handbook uh, that was previously referred to here as the integration handbook. Um, so uh, some of these other writings, uh, you know, we've been doing publication, uh, writing, uh, doing publications and project reports, uh, as well as giving presentations at conferences. So a lot of these, these other communication activities are, are already ongoing for us. For the working meeting, uh, we're looking to explore topics related to archival discovery and delivery um, and expand upon them um, to develop those ideas into uh, potential future possibilities for, for uh, archives and special collections. In particular, we're looking to build on those from the forum, but we're also not limiting those ideas to the forum. Secondly, um, our goal is to provide a, a welcoming and supportive environment for collaboration with groups organized by topic. I'm not gonna talk a lot about it now, but one of the things that's really critical for our project is our set of community agreements and our code of conduct, which sort of sets the terms of collaboration. Um, we want to make sure that our, our project uh, uh, is inclusive and is supportive and that participants feel safe to sometimes speak hard truths or to get the support that they need from their colleagues. Uh, third, um, I, I also want to acknowledge that one of our goals, um, as I mentioned just previously, is to facilitate the creation of, of written page, uh, written contributions that describe the present state and future opportunities in our cold discovery delivery. We're looking ideally upon completion for these written contributions to be about five to 10 pages. That's not a hard limit or and that's not a hard minimum, um, but it's sort of a, it seems like it's the right size as a potential option to, to sort of, you know, for, to give people a target. In terms of the format um, of the working meeting, uh, we're looking for groups of approximately three to six people per topic. Um, again, this is not a hard limit. And we recognize that you know, there may be um, smaller groups that, that come together or slightly larger groups. Um, but the important is that you know, you're, you're working with groups of people, uh, a group of people to develop your idea. We'll also have four two hour synchronous sessions across six weeks um, between mid-April to late May. Um, and there will be a mix of facilitated exercises and group discussions, both across the large group and within your specific topic groups. Um, also during the six week period, uh, we ask or encourage you to uh, create some additional self-organized time as needed to complete an initial draft of your written contribution. So, you know, if you want to organize with your group to meet additionally, you can certainly do that. Or if you wanna do your work asynchronously, you can do that as well. In terms of logistics and schedule, um, our call for proposal currently closes at 11.59 p.m. Pacific time on March 8th. Um, and uh, uh, within the following three weeks, uh, we will be reviewing the submissions for, uh, from potential participants and with the goal of uh, letting uh, the selected participants know that they'll be able to participate as of uh, March 29th. Um, then we will have our four sessions. Um, first, uh, the week of April 19th. Uh, these are all tentative dates at this point. Um, for the first session, uh, which will be uh, a large group session with some, some focused smaller group time. Um, the second session, the week of April 27th, uh, which again, I think will probably actually be more small group time. Uh, the week of May 10th uh, will be the third session. Again, probably mostly small group. And the week of May 24th uh, with a larger group session, um, particularly to get feedback um, and to, to share work in progress. Um, we are hoping that written contributions will be done as of late June or July. Um, uh, but again, um, you know, our project end date uh, for our grant project is August 31st, 2021. So we're, we're hoping to, to get these before the, the end of our project so we can sort of combine things and, and do any final editorial work before we release the, the handbook. Uh, for the CFP, uh, we ask for participant information, um, which includes contact information and some basic demographics. Um, if you participated in the Lighting the Way uh, forum or applied for the Lighting the Way forum, um, that information is optional and we indicate that. Um, second of all, uh, we ask for a 250 word abstract of your topic. Um, we know that your topics may evolve over time or work 
Uh, so we're not looking for a perfectly crafted proposal. We're just looking for some evidence that you've shown some thought around this. Given that we're planning to publish this, uh, we ask for your permission or your consideration of publishing your uh, submission at, under a Creative Commons attribution license or the CC BY license. Uh, and then finally, uh, we ask for your co-applicant information. Um, so the other, basically the other members of your group. Deadline for submissions is March 8th uh, at 11.59 PM Pacific. Um, and this link uh, is the link to uh, the CFP announcement, which provides all this information as well. So that's at lightingtheway.stanford.edu slash WM dash CFP. Uh, so these are just sample topics and formats. Um, you know, I don't think we necessarily expect or want to force any of these specific topics, but um, some of the topics that came up uh, at the Lighting the Way Forum for that may offer opportunities for expanded uh, sort of concept development are things like virtual reading rooms um, and providing remote access to archival collections in a sustainable manner. Uh, uh, work focusing on user experience and discovery of archival materials, how institutions or projects have integrated systems and software supporting archival discovery and delivery, um, integrating archival description with other access and fulfillment systems, including for digital collections and things addressing copyright policies and practices. In terms of formats, um, I think we're pretty flexible. We'll provide some more specific guidance on the format for contributions as you know, for, for participants when selected. But these things could include uh, case studies of, of specific things that you've done at, a, at your institution or in collaboration with other institutions, uh, proposals of new or emerging models, um, analysis or position papers on, you know, sort of key components or systems or requirements. Um, and, or, you know, we're, we're very open to this, but this is just sort of intended to give you a starting point. Uh, just really quickly, um, I, the, the link to these slides will also be included, um, but links here include uh, the CFP announcement, the application form itself, as well as a PDF version, which is just for your reference, uh, the working meeting website, and the, the forum report. Um, reading the forum report is totally optional, um, but may provide a little bit more context about the work that we've done. Um, in particular, I recommend just, if nothing else, reading the executive summary and the lessons learned and next step section, um, which is, I think, probably overall about five pages. Um, the larger report is much, much longer um, and shares a lot of detail about the work that we did. Um, but, you, you know, it, it, it's an important, I think it, just reading those sections will give you a lot of context. Um, we also encourage you to contact us, um, either contact the project team um, or myself directly with questions. And uh, thanks again, and we're excited to hear about your interest in the project.